everyone. So in today's video, I wanted to revisit old, and by old, I mean not actually that old, you know, within the last six months of hyped up beauty launches. I wanted to revisit them and talk about whether or not I believe that they were worth the hype surrounding them. And I'm just really excited about this video because I think it's really cool to kind of take a look back and reflect and look at those items that, you know, at the time we were, you know, had these mag crushes on them. For me, I'm looking for something with legs. I want that longevity. I want that makeup item that I'm going to consistently repurchase over and over again. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I hope that you guys are excited too. And if you enjoy it, please make sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. It really um, does help me out. Also, this is the first video on a new camera. Um, actually, it's the second time I'm filming this video because the audio was a little bit weird. So if things aren't absolutely perfect, it's because I'm just kind of getting used to things. Again, I have the same mic, but the audio was weird in that video. I mean, I am dealing with technology that I just have no grasp on, but I'm trying. And I really want to kind of take my video quality to the next level. So if you guys think it looks good, if you think it looks bad, I mean, I mean, I'm just looking for positive reinforcement. But first, let's talk about the foundation that's on my face today. And it is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Now, I remember when this launch launched, it was like, there was not a single person that could say a bad thing about this foundation. Everyone was absolutely enamored with this foundation. And I tried it and I had, I mean, I was keeping in mind these expectations, all of these words that other people had been saying about it. And I have to tell you that this foundation, I do believe was worth the hype. First of all, number one reason I think that it was so hyped up is that it is a product that I feel like will work for a variety of skin types. It has quite a bit of coverage with very little product, which I do find that people enjoy. You know, we like getting a good bang for our buck, but also the finish is really pretty. It's natural, but it does have a little bit of this Th this light reflection quality to it without it being a dewy foundation. There's a level of refinement to the formula that makes it immediately, you know, I think of this makeup for event makeup, for wedding makeup, um, for photography. It just looks really, really good on camera and it looks really good in person. So when you can create a product that kind of gives you both, you don't have to choose, that's one that I'm automatically really intrigued by. And as I have consistently continued to wear this, I definitely think that it is worth the hype. For me personally, I feel like this kind of formula is going to stand the test of time. You know, people will go back and repurchase it um, rather than just go through it and say, oh, that was good, what's the next thing? And I don't necessarily feel that way about another foundation that got a lot of hype uh, this year. So this is the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have two shades. I have the shade three and two, both of which are not my shade. Um, I'm definitely probably the shade one. Um, these lean a little bit yellow, by the way. Here's the thing. I think the reason this product got a lot of hype surrounding it a few months ago is that it is a makeup item that came out at a really perfect time for Charlotte Tilbury. And I feel like with makeup launches, timing is very key. I feel like recently a lot more people are in interested in Charlotte Tilbury makeup, whereas before it was kind of the luxury beauty consumer. And now I think that it is way more of a wider net. I'm seeing a lot younger people like Charlotte Tilbury makeup. And also as far as like makeup that everyone wants, right now, like makeup on their face. It's the Charlotte Tilbury look, right? You know, it's just a good time for Charlotte Tilbury, you know, with the flawless filter, with the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wands selling out like crazy. I'll talk about this product in a second. You know, everyone was waiting. What is going to be the next launch from Charlotte Tilbury? And when Charlotte says you're gonna get beautiful skin, you believe her. And I don't think that the product is bad. Um, I think it's actually good, but there's just something missing for me. Um, there's a little bit of like an elegance or a refinement that I feel is lost in this formula. Um, you know, I notice it immediately when I put on the NARS light reflecting foundation that my skin has a blur, the texture is gone. Like it makes my skin look 
better. Um, whereas I feel like texture wise, just the overall quality of my skin looks good. It's good, but you know, it, it doesn't make me smile, you know, with every time I put on the Kosas Revealer Foundation, for example, I'm like, oh, it's just a good skin day. I feel, I feel happy. And I think at the end of the day, I don't feel overjoyed when I put on this makeup item. You know, when I think about Charlotte Tilbury makeup products, I'm like, I'm thinking about my new favorite cream bronzer from her, or I'm thinking about, you know, Oyster Pearl, like, which I love and have loved for years. These products from her make me so excited that, you know, when I try something like this, I'm a bit let down. I do think that the thinness of the product is nice. I like that you can build it up very readily. Um, but there's just a little bit of something that for me is missing in the formula. Next up, let's talk about a bronzer stick that I feel like the hype was kind of delayed with this one. Um, so these are the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt shaping sticks and I have two shades. I have the shade light and light medium. Um, when this came out, I immediately tried it and loved it and I've loved it since last summer, this formula. I think a lot of people are kind of gravitating to some newer launches perhaps, but but I have to tell you that I still think that this product is absolutely beautiful. It's a cream bronzer that I really depend on because of the texture and the way it wants to stick onto the skin. There are a lot of cream bronzers that I feel like have too much slip. They have too much silicone. They're just kind of getting everywhere on the face. They don't want to stick and get a nice even blend. Um, and the problem with a formula like that is like you can blend the first layer, but then if you go in with another layer, the layers don't want to stick together. So it drives me freaking insane. You'd never have to deal with that with this formula. I really like the shades as well. As far as kind of a middle of the road cream formula that isn't too emollient, uh, isn't too stiff, in general, I just think it's a really stable, consistent product. And again, I love a consistent makeup product. Now, let's get back to another Charlotte Tilbury item, the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand, the high blush, like the highlighter blush from Charlotte Tilbury. Again, specifically talking about the shade Pinkgasm. So this was a product that I feel like really took over TikTok. Like everyone was talking about this product. And now, again, that the hype has kind of subsided a little bit. I wanted to revisit this formula with you all. Um, I do have it on this cheek. I have another blush I'm about to talk about on this cheek. But you guys, it's just, it's really nice. Um, it gives you this really fresh, dewy effect. It has a touch of a pearl, but it's not too much pearl, which I've tried the peach version of this and it was way too much pearl. Like, Every pore was accentuated on my face, um, but the pink does not have as much pearl and it just gives you this really fresh, cheeky, like it's just kind of like a very flirty kind of flush. It's really easy to work with. It's perfect for a no makeup makeup day. It's perfect to give you that like Charlotte Tilbury highlighted effect that I think a lot of us are after. I think it's really good. I do think that the hype surrounding it is warranted. I will say that on this side of my cheek um, is the Tarte Man Eater blush and I wanted to do kind of a side by side for you guys. Um, this is the shade PG Pink. It is very similar to Pinkgasm from Charlotte Tilbury. So, you know, this one's a little bit less expensive. The formula is more of a gel liquid, whereas I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm is more of a thin liquid texture. I mean, it still has an oomph to it, um, a heft, but in general, both are really pretty. So if, you, if you're if you like, Amanda, I just want to save a little bit of money, that's when I would lead you towards the Tarte. I have been talking about this one a lot. And I also picked up the shade Buff recently and I love both shades. So if you were wondering if there was another option, there is this as an option, but in general, this hype I do think was warranted. By the way guys, I just got done filming and I'm looking at the footage and I can tell that I didn't blend out the Charlotte Tilbury all the way because in my last video, I was trying to build it up while using a viewfinder that I'm not used to to do that. Very small screen. But anyway, Maneater, Charlotte Tilbury, they look very, very similar, so. Back to the video. Now, speaking of Tarte, let's talk about the Tarte Maracuja Juicy 
lip plumps. I have the shade Honeysuckle on my lips today. Actually, um, I didn't reapply before I tried doing this video for a second time. I'm also wearing the new lip liner from Rare Beauty in the shade Wise with this, and it's a perfect combo. This lip liner is epic. Um, I got all of the lip liners and lipsticks from Rare Beauty. Um, do you guys wanna see like a dedicated video to that? Do you wanna see a review of those? Uh, let me know down below, but. So I think that this product is just newly starting to cool off. A lot of the shades were going out of stock, but some of you may know that I have talked about the shade Honeysuckle and it is definitely a favorite of mine. So right off the bat, this shade Honeysuckle, worth the hype. I, I, I'll i just throw it out there. I think that this kind of black cherry shade, it's just, for me, it's perfection. I absolutely love it. It has enough sheerness. It has enough juiciness. It doesn't have too much plump to it. It's just enough. It feels secure on the lips, but it still doesn't feel uncomfortable. Just in general, for me, a very, very pretty lip product. I think a lot of people were talking about some of the other shades, like the shade Peachy Beige, which I have, but is probably sitting in front of me and I just can't see it. For me, I think a lot of hype is being surrounded the lighter shades. Um, and I personally don't think that those are worth it. Um, I don't personally like a more milky light nude on my lips, especially in a glossy formula, because I find that it just kind of, you know, the color gets stuck in my lip lines and it just looks a little bit unflattering. It doesn't feel like um, it's kind of sinking into the lips and looking like a true lip color. So that's just my feeling about it. However, I know a lot of people that love a milky, light, glossy kind of lip color. So if you are one of those people, then I do think there's a good chance that you will be a fan of some of the lighter shades. So for me, it's all about personal preference um, as far as the shades go. I do really like the formula, just not of the lighter shades. I, I would personally stick with some of the darker shades like Honeysuckle or even um, like some of the more rosy shades or the plum. Those to me don't have as much of that milky base to them. Uh, next, who? Fleur, missing person. This fragrance, holy crap, did it make waves. And I was someone, I went into Sephora during uh, the Sephora savings event and I smelt this uh, actually for the first time with um, an employee. She was very kind and opened up um, a tester for me. I smelt it and I was like, huh. She's like, yeah, you know, when I smelled it, I was kind of like, huh, too. And I left with it on my wrist and I said, huh. I kept smelling it for the rest of the day and I said, I gotta get my ass back to Sephora. It is so, so, so good, guys. I absolutely adore this fragrance. So the best way I can describe it is, it is like the most intimate fragrance that I have ever smelt. It really smells like that fresh laundry, like sleeping in sheets, like someone that you're with. It just has this gorgeous, intimate, warm laundry sex appeal that is also like very effortless. It's like the most effortless, real, sexy smell that I could imagine. It has like a touch of a muskiness. It's like, I think like a sexier version of Glossier U, which I think Glossier U is really nice for that like true U skin kind of smell, but more for daytime. I mean, I would wear this during daytime too, but like this, this just feels super intimate. I love the way it smells on me. If you didn't like the kind of pink peppercorn note of Glossier U, there's a good chance that you might prefer this. Ugh, it's, it's good. It is, it is good. Next, let's talk about the Chanel, Tande Chanel. Um, I think that recently, you know, this isn't a new product, but they did come out with a new shade. This is the deep bronze shade. I picked it up because I am anticipating doing another balm bronzer uh, review overview for you guys this year. And I was like, you know what? I know you already tried out this formula, but you should just try it out again, get another shade. You know, you didn't like the last shade. There's a chance that this formula um, of this shade might be better. You know, just give it a chance. Give it another chance, Amanda. It's been a few years. Well, 
I still don't like it. <laughs> I still am just not a fan. For me, it just does not want to stick to my skin. And even when it does, even when I'm like, okay, this bronzer look is okay. It fades and patches so awkwardly as you continue to wear it. There will be actual spots missing of the product. You know, everyone's skin is different. My skin does not get along well with this formula. And, you know, ultimately, I think the formula is kind of cool. It's kind of like a gel souffle kind of texture that I was really excited about. But again, it's exciting, but in practice, it just it didn't live up to what I wanted it to be. So for me personally, um, I would just wait for my upcoming video and check out one of the other cream bronzers that I'm talking about. Um, because for me, this one, I think uh, is kind of worth a pass. Sorry for the spoiler for that upcoming video, but I, I don't think that it's good. At least on me, at least on me, okay? And lastly, we have the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush. Now, when this first released, everyone was talking about it, but no one had tried it yet. I don't think that it's that great. Um, I was super excited about it because it, like to me, I just wanted to try more from Laura Mercier. I also tried out the, like, the Glow Tinted Moisturizer, which was a new formula from them. Ultimately, this kind of blended out into nothing while also looking just awkwardly patchy. I have heard that some of the shades are different, like some blend better than others. So, you know, take with that what you will, but this sun-drenched shade just did not get along well on my skin, unfortunately. And I really wanted this to be pretty, especially because it's like the perfect shade for summer. But unfortunately, um, I don't think that it was worth it. And I think that this you know, this product, it, it got hype again, but like no one had gotten it physically in their hands yet. And then a lot of people didn't talk about it after the launch, which I feel like kind of says something, or maybe it says nothing. Uh, you know, it's all open to interpretation. So yeah, guys, that was a bunch of hyped up products that I wanted to revisit with you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will leave all of them linked down below for you guys. Oh, by the way, I wanted to kind of acknowledge this. I'm wearing the Iconic London Crayon and Liquid Glitter like duo. I, this is, has to be like the third or fourth time that I have worn this. And I wore it and I was like, it just looks so dull. It, it's so disappointing. Um, So I just put like a gloss over it and like called it a day. So if you're like, whoa, glossy vibes. Yes, Um, not intentionally or wasn't expecting that, but but this looks a lot better than it did before. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one.